Welcome, Vault Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness, and as I record this, hopefully my Dance Dance Apocalypse video has already come out and amazed and delighted you all. But as I record this, this is my first video back in Fallout 4 in nearly a year since Fallout 76 beta came out. And I'm recording this because as of right now, I am at the prototype or proof of concept phase of my build on Dance Dance Apocalypse. And there are some things that I had to figure out for the screen that frankly, I haven't seen anybody else doing. I feel very clever about that. And I frankly wanted to brag about it some. As of right now, my screen is simply set on a loop that repeats all of the different scenes that it has. So it's got the different arrows for the you know, inputs for the dance game plus the starting animation of the 3, 2, 1, go with the darkened light boxes. And this thing was a nightmare to wire. Let's go take a look at this. I do not intend to create a tutorial on this because it is a literal forest of wires back here. And any tutorial that I make, I think, would be difficult to follow at best and probably would have to be about two hours long. And that would just be with the video sped up because the amount of very tedious work that I had to do back here was kind of staggering. And the reason why this was so complex to wire is threefold. First, I want to point out something over here. See how this is what I, this, by the way, this is what I'm calling my wrong demonstrator. It's the wrong way to, to do some things. You see how these light boxes are all washed out if I light up this entire screen. These four in particular, the, the colored ones, are wired directly to the switch while the rest is wired up to the animation gear and back. But if you don't wire up the screen correctly, the colors are so washed out that you can't hardly see them. So that was the first thing that what kind of posed a challenge for me. And the second is most easily observed if we just stare at a single light box or a single pixel on this screen. And what we'll see here is that it's dark, it's white, red, blue, green, orange. This is not something that I have seen any other YouTuber do, of having the same apparent light box give multiple colors. Now you'll notice that when I you know, hover on it, it says efficient light box. That's because I've got nearly 300 light boxes here showing off some different things. And I wanted to use a light box that doesn't actually draw power. So instead of uh, taking an additional power for each light box, so that 20 light boxes would take 20 power, these just have to be hooked up and they will work. But otherwise, not anything special about those light boxes, and yet nobody else that I've seen can do this. It's, uh, it's probably more apparent on this little demonstrator over here, where I've got white, red, blue, you know, this whole wall is changing color, and then the final is just a random pattern. What's really cool about that is that it takes hardly any wiring to do at all. In fact, if we look back here inside of this, what it looks like is we've got a single interval switch and a power counter and one wire that heads up to the screen up there. This wire right here is just this, a switch that I have up front to turn the whole thing on and off. 
So that was another thing that I thought was very clever about how I was wiring up my screen over there. The last thing that, uh, sorry for whipping the camera around there, uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys or point out because it was easy to miss in a video is see how I've got these different scenes. Everybody else that I see doing light box animations essentially has variations on one of these two themes over here. We've got uh, something that fills up and then comes back and fills from the other direction, right? And this is something that I think most people can figure out on their own with some patience and some time. A lot of what I do with wiring boils down to patience and time. Draco Invictus did a fairly nice tutorial on how to set something like this up on his channel. And all it boils down to is an interval switch that then goes to a couple power counters and the power counters are hooked to either end of a series of delayed on switches. So power counter one fires and everything comes in from the right, power counter two fires, and then everything goes in from the left. You could have a third power counter, for example, that was hooked up to the middle where everything would fill from the middle. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted to shut the door. Actually, wait, leave this open because maybe this is a little bit easier to see from above. Also, I really like these hatch floors. I just haven't really had a place to use them in a video. So um, you can kind of see it from up here. We've got an interval switch on the right, a couple power counters, and delay switches. And those delay switches run the lights. The chaser light is a variation on the same theme where instead of just having delay on switches, we also have a delay on uh, a delay off switch come in behind and turn off the previous light so it gives this kind of illusion of motion it's it's more apparent that illusion if you speed things up but i have everything set on 1 second intervals just so that we can look in detail at exactly what is happening here and again this is a variation on a theme that I've seen lots of YouTubers do and some of them have pulled off some very amazing effects. I'll try to remember to leave a link to a video in the description of an animated dance floor that came out early in the game's life and it just completely blew my mind. But you can see here same sort of thing we've got the delayed on switches coming in from the right and the delay off switches you know, that follow right behind the delay on. But if you look carefully at all those lightbox animations that pretty much anybody does, it is, again, variations on these same two themes. What you don't see people doing is what I have set up a demonstrator here to show. You can see that we've got those vertical bars that fill from the middle to the outside and from the outside to the inside. That's not special. But this is special. Now I've got a ring that goes from the outside to the inside and a ring that goes from the middle to the outside. And here's another one, horizontal bars instead of vertical bars. If you watch very carefully, in how other people do their lightbox animations, you're not going to see this, where they have different patterns. They have the same pattern that fills up and empties over and over again, and they give the illusion of complexity by changing the order that they do things in. But this is not the same thing because I have different patterns. And I don't know if I'm making sense here, but hopefully you can understand and appreciate that uh, this is different. This is something special and something that I am very proud of and ultimately was required to do something as complex 
as a game within our game that has multiple screens and multiple things going on. Now as much as I would have liked to have had those arrows, for example, falling from the top of the screen to the bottom, um, that would have just exponentially made it more complicated. And the other thing is that it would have required that I use the very small light boxes. And as you can already see with the wiring back here, this was extremely difficult to wire correctly. Like, and you can't make a mistake. If you make a mistake, just load up a previous save because you'll never be able to trace that one wire that you screwed up, right? So trying to do those small light boxes and have the arrows fall from the top of the screen to the bottom would have just been too much. And as arrogant as it may sound for me to say it this way, but even I would not be willing to take on a challenge like that especially on console you can probably tell that i'm chugging pretty hard here this is starlight drive-in which is a huge settlement and literally there is nothing here i have scrapped everything and completely emptied out the size bar and completely then filled it again just with these light box demonstrators so to try and have a uh, a screen that had arrows moving across it was simply too much of a challenge and so I'm disappointed by that and yet I'm still proud of what I managed to accomplish here. Now I hope that all of this bragging has made some kind of sense and if people express an interest in tutorials on how to do these more complex animations and do things like these color changing light boxes, I will try to oblige, but I'm probably not going to just make a video. Somebody's probably going to have to express, actually probably multiple somebody's will have to express an interest. So if you're interested in those tutorials, let me know about it in a comment. And if, uh, if you liked hearing me brag, uh, hit the like button down below. If uh, you did not like, please tell me why in a comment before you hit the dislike button. If you're not subscribed, I have plenty of content coming. And uh, so consider subscribing. Until next time, my name is Nacho Bidness, and I'm saying it's a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.